hi there and welcome back to another episode at station road now i thought i'd strike while the iron is hot and get on to this girder span section of the viaduct so you'll probably no doubt recall in stage four we had the majority of the brick arch viaduct sections complete plus also the buttress on the other side of the mainline tracks so in today's video it's a case of looking at this girder span section that's going to cross between the two brick arch sections So hopefully you'll recall from stage four, I just touched on this girder section or girder span that's going into the brick arch viaduct. And I did a little bit of research and showed an example of the type of girder span that I'd like to use. So based on that and a reasonable amount of work involved in designing this girder section and also producing laser cut components for assembly it was a case of cracking into this project so we'll head over to that now and see what i got up to so before i actually start designing anything i really need to take a look at this bridge in brighton and just sort of see how it's actually constructed and what are the various elements in here now the interesting thing is is with the help of street view i can actually take a good look at the underside of the bridge and what's going on under there and quite interesting is there is some very large girders that run underneath so you can clearly see that the arch sections purely cosmetic i don't think there's really any kind of load bearing qualities in the arches and of course the actual main girders in through here is actually what's supporting the track bed above the idea is obviously to model these girders as well and then of course these decorative arches kind of get hidden a little bit as well in here so it's quite an interesting structure in that sense now if we sort of take a view back further down the street and I'll just whiz around and we'll go back a bit further you can kind of see that girders really disappear under the structure and of course the main feature actually becomes the arches so that's the source of inspiration for this bridge structure so if we head over to our design software and of course i'm using illustrator to work up the bridge now one of the things that clearly is different is the gap between the two buttresses is a lot narrower than what's on my layout so the first thing i needed to do is get a template and this is just a card template that i made up that was trimmed and fitted exactly within that gap with the quite obscure sort of angles to it and then of course I've scanned that and brought that into the software so I can actually scale exactly to the correct dimensions so I first started assembling a road bed and of course these lines through here represent the girders and of course I've started designing in some notches and so forth for the material that I'm gonna cut into now for the base structure I'm gonna use two and a half mil MDF and then we started looking at the actual arch structure here now if we look at the bridge here and this is as it proportionally is at the moment and then what I've done is I've stretched this photo out to the width of the actual gap that I need on the layout and you can clearly see it's proportionally it's just not working terribly well so what I've done is maintain these oval or elongated shapes in the bridge structure here into this design but at the much wider curve 
so this is the structure as it is we've got our arch section there's a small amount of girder section here but I think it's possibly not overly structural and then of course we've got a bit of a lattice work for the fencing on top these components here represent the buttresses and brick walls on either side so once I'd sorted that out and worked out the dimensions what I actually have done is printed this out just on a simple A4 sheet of paper and folded that and put it in position just to see how it looks and I think it looks okay the first rendition I did it the arch was really too shallow so in this version here I have made the arch a bit deeper but generally I'm happy with the overall proportions in relation to of course to the brick viaduct so once that's done it is now a case of moving through into cutting out all these components so this is the base structure here with the slots for the girder sections we've got the upper roadbed structure which is going to be laid on top and as you can see we've got notches here where the girders are slotting in here and then these components the arch components have got their own slots that fit in here so this is all two and a half mil mdf and this is 1.4 mil case board which is that really high density cardboard and then this lot is going to be cut out of a much thinner high density card I think I've got a 1 mil or a 0.9 or 0.8 mil black card that's very high density and hopefully this will be able to cut out this detail so this is the lattice fence work and then this is the outer girder sections which are on the outside of the bridge just to give it a little bit of relief so we've now got all these components cut out and we've got our two and a half mil mdf base structure so that is the the lower deck structure there's the upper deck structure we've got our girders here which are just basically the two and a half mil mdf i'm not going to worry about detailing the underside of these girders too much and then we've got our 2.4 mil case board which of course is our ornate sort of wrought iron effect there so the first thing i'm going to do is actually install these components in here which are the main girders which slot into these slots here and what i've done is i've actually extended the mdf beyond this diagonal line here so once this is anchored in then i can actually trim the ends off on an angle now this is going to probably be a tight fit getting these in here because I haven't really made any allowance for that but then I kind of like the idea of it being a tight fit because then it's pretty much in there and it will also be theoretically it should be vertical I've got my right angle here just to double check but it should be all okay now I'm just using standard PVA glue for this and I may need possibly a lightweight hammer just to tap these in as well so we're just going to drizzle glue on these inside edges so that's the first girder in and yeah it definitely needed tapping in but it's certainly going to make it very strong and rigid So there's the three main girders in place and if you can notice here it's protruding beyond the diagonal as I mentioned and of course once this is dry I'm actually just going to trim that off, chisel off on an angle these end pieces to make this whole end flush.
So I've now got the majority of the assembly of this girder section complete and I'll just go through a number of aspects that you may have seen during the sped up footage. Now essentially this entire girder section is all laser cut and it's essentially three materials. You've got the MDF structure, you've got the 1.4 mil case board and then there's a 0.8 mil black card here. Now the only component that's not laser cut and this is these little wee white strips here. Now they're just one millimeter square styrene strips that I've added on here that give it the depth of this girder section in here. So I did actually end up having to cut the lattice work here twice. The first lot that I designed it was just simply too fine and trying to poke out all the individual components in between was just ridiculous. So I redesigned it and I actually used a slightly thicker card and it's done a better job although it is quite brittle but I think once I get this covered in a base primer and base coat of paint it's going to increase the strength of it so in this section here you'll notice a hole in the lattice work where it's sort of kind of chewed it a little bit I'm actually not too worried about that it kind of actually looks quite interesting it looks like maybe some of the lattice work has actually rusted away and it's come apart so you know it's got a little bit of a rustic look to it so I'm actually just going to run with that so it's certainly looking pretty respectable I think for a girder section and of course we've got our main structural girders here and then of course we've got this more decorative arch section not sure what that would have been made of I know I said wrought iron but it's probably not it's cast iron or or just simply some form of iron structure there but it's certainly looking the part the only thing I'm not doing is in theory there's possibly a little bit more detail in this section the only thing I've done is I've added a very thin strip of card on the underside of this arch just to give it that little bit of relief in there but otherwise I'm not going to go any further with the detail this is actually located kind of at the back of the layout against what eventually will be a back scene so if we take a look at this and I'll pop it in position within the viaduct structure and we'll just take a look and see how it looks so it slots in it's designed in such a way that there's a bit of overhang on the girder section that actually slots into the brick arch section and it's just slightly narrow so the only thing left to do in terms of the brick art section of course is to create the buttresses and slightly higher parapet walls directly either side of this girder section so it gives it that little bit more weight and the effect of it being a quite structural component to the girder section being supported by the brick arch components. So I think the next step is I'm going to whiz over this with just a base grey primer. I'm just going to use a rattle can for that and then go over it with a, a base colour. So some form of base grey colour and then obviously on top of that there's going to be a lot of weathering applied. There'll be potentially indications of rust and grime and all of that kind of stuff that would naturally build up on such a structure. So as I just mentioned, now that the structure is complete, of course I went over it with a base grey primer and then after that I went over it with a base colour which acts really as a foundation for the colour that the viaduct will be as I mentioned with weathering and other treatments added afterwards and so with the girder section now all painted up I think it's really a case of cracking on with adding to the buttresses either side and extending the height of the buttresses so we have capping stones on top and all of those kind of components
So there's still a number of little wee small aspects to finish off on this viaduct and also the girder span. So obviously one of the key components to add to this is of course some weathering and I think this weathering is going to help quite a bit where you can actually see a bit of a tonal difference in the brickwork. Now this is a result of not printing all the brickwork in one batch. So when it came to constructing the buttress on the other side of the tracks, of course that was done at a later stage and of course I printed the brickwork at a later stage and hence why there's a subtle difference there in the brickwork. But as I said, I think with a little bit of weathering we can certainly hide that difference that is currently there at the moment. So some other bits to add of course is to the bottom of the arches there needs to be some kind of footing for those which is actually anchored into the buttresses themselves. I haven't actually worked that out yet but they had just some little things to finish off and then of course there's also the capping stones to run across the top of the parapet walls as well. Of course once that's all done then it'll be a case of looking into the actual track bed itself and doing this very disused and overgrown appearance. Now my thoughts are and I'm still sort of undecided at this stage is I may have the remains of one of the tracks. So originally it was a double track and I'm thinking maybe one of the tracks is still in place and the other one of course has been lifted but the tracks are very rusted and with lots of overgrowth and brambles and long grass and all of that type of thing. So that's my thoughts on when it comes to the overgrown nature of the track bed itself. So there we have it for stage five and I think I'm definitely very happy about the decision I made on the type of girder span running across the main lines. I think if it was an arch that went above the track bed it just wouldn't have looked right. I think the style of girder span that I've chosen to use really does actually work in with this brick arch viaduct. So I certainly hope you've enjoyed today's episode and once again gathered some inspiration and ideas for your own layouts. So I'll sign off for now. Once again do take care, look after yourselves, of course don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.